In the gear system shown in figure, the motor applies a torque of 600 newton meter to the gear at A. The rotation speed is 120 RPM. Shafts 1 and 2 are solid shafts. And the bearings shown allow free rotation of the shafts. So the bearings here are free for rotation. That's always the case for torsional elements. So those, we can ignore them. A. <clears throat> determine the torque provided by the gear system at gear E. So we want to see how much is the output torque at the right end. B. What is the rotation speed of gear at E? And what is the output power at E? Okay, let's see how we can solve this. First, how much is the output torque? To determine the output torque, as we did here, we need to start from A and move all the way to point E. Torque at A would be 600 newton meter. This is provided in the problem statement. When we are moving to B, torque at B will be larger because that has higher diameter compared to A. The gear ratio will be 72 over 24, and that gives me negative 1800 newton meter. Okay, the next move will be from B to C. There is not any change when we move from B to C because that is moving along the shaft and there is not any external torque applied in between. So at C, that would be the same, negative 1800 newton meter. The second movement will be from C to D, and here we again have to use the gear ratio. In this case, we are again getting higher torque because the gear D has more teeth compared to gear C. So the gear ratio would be 60 over 30 with the negative sign, and that gives me 3600 newton meter. That would be torque at D, and torque at E would be similar to that because we need to move a long shaft too, and that would be 3600 newton meter. So that's the answer of part A. How we can determine parts E and C? There is actually a very quick way to determine the answer of these two parts. Let's talk about them one by one, but there is a very fast way to answer that. First, how much is the rotation speed? Rotation speed at A is 120 RPM. I need to multiply that by 2 pi over 60 to convert that into a standard unit, which is radian per second. That would be 12.57. And the angular velocity at B would be smaller, so the gear ratio will be 24 over 72. <clears throat> that would be 4.19. The angular velocity when we move from B to C will remain the same. And the angular velocity at that point will be 4.19. And the angular velocity at D again decreases. So the gear ratio will be smaller than 1, which is 30 over 60. And that gives me the angular velocity at that point equal to 2.09. And that would be similar to the angular velocity at the output. So that is the answer of the second part. As I said, there is a shortcut to find the answer of that. I will talk about that in a bit. And last, how much is the power at the output at E? So for determining power, we can simply multiply torque at E and angular velocity at E to determine how much is that. But we don't need to do that. Why? Because the power is constant in the system. So whatever the power is at the beginning, that would be the same at the end. So I can simply multiply 600 newton meter by 120 RPM after unit conversion, and that gives me the power. So that would be 600 times 12.56. That would be equal to 7540 watts. Now we can think about what is the fast way to determine the angular velocity at the end of the system without using the gear ratio. Note that the power is the same in the entire system.